the 2017 final edition of First and Ten with Coach Joe Prudhomme. I'm Jimmy the St. Christopher as the Rams drop to 0 and 10, losing to Arizona Christian University on Saturday, 63 to 7. A big pick after a strong drive, the opening drive by the Rams. There was a big pick six for ACU and then four offensive touchdowns and a fumble recovery in the end zone. And just like that, it was 42 nothing at the half. Coach, how do those early mistakes affect the defense going forward? Oh, it, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. They have a, you know, they were on the field way too many snaps uh, the other day. And um, those kind of things just, it kind of, Put you just like you're pushing a rock up the hill, you know, it makes it tough on the whole team. But it, uh, you know, it's something to learn from and, and uh, hopefully move on. You had four out of five non starters on that offensive line, which has been, we've been talking about all season, decimated right. by injuries. Mm -hmm. Did they hold their own against a bigger, more solid defense? You know, I thought they did pretty well considering we threw a lot of them into the fire for the first time. There were three guys never even played in a game before that played in that game. Um, there was only, I think, one backup that was could help them. Uh, but other than that, it was, uh, you know, they're fighting. Everybody's fighting right now. We have so many injuries, both sides of the ball, the, the defense, the summation of how much they've been on the field all year. Uh, it's, it's starting to wear them down. You can see that not only are we young, but now we're starting to feel the weight of the entire season. And, you know, we just got to gather up and rally and fight one more week. Eric Richards is your third quarterback after Kane Hart and then Colby Reed. How mm -hmm. much improvement have you seen in him after these three? You know, games? I think he's done very well. Um, he, he's hitting his, his, his reads are better. His throwing is a little more accurate. He still gets a little bit of happy feet in there, but who could blame him? I mean, the pocket breaks down. He's running, scrambling. Uh, but I, I think overall he's, he's made some strides. What did you see from Brandon Reeves? He had 58 mm -hmm. total all-purpose yards. Yeah, Brandon fought. He, he, uh, he made some plays, and he, you know, he – Made some people miss and bounced off some people, broke some tackles, and you know I was I was proud of Brandon. I thought uh, I thought he maximized really his opportunity. I said 58, and he actually had 85, so I was shortchanging him there. Those all-purpose yards. Yeah. One thing I know that I'm not going to shortchange is the Trey Jackson punt return, mm -hmm. 70 yards punt return. That was the first in obviously the modern era for the Rams. That was pretty exciting. How did yes. you How did you see that? Oh, it was great. I mean, we needed some kind of spark of some sort, and and you know Trey uh, provided it, and we had two or three. Colton Wade had a real key block that really sprung it. Uh, I think it was Michael Haynes had a great block, and Boyd, once Trey saw some open ground, he started, he started really moving. So that was a very nice play to have. We're with Coach Joe Prudhomme on 1st and 10 on Ramsports.net. How important it is in those big blowout losses to get the reserves some playing time? Well, the reserves are already playing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's where, where our reserves are playing. And, um, you know, there's some defensive guys that got a chance to play that wouldn't. But, you know, we, our starters are we're decimated in a big way. So... Playing, we're playing the people we got. This year, five home games. Mm -hmm. As we said, the first Rams football in 76 years. Unfortunate they haven't gotten a win yet, but that's going to come next year, I'm sure, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later. But almost 3,000 average at Farrington Field, mm -hmm. so that's got to be encouraging. Oh, that's that's been the highlight. Uh, you know, what we sit down and we go over everything, uh, our our positives, our negatives, things that we can build on, things that that. Um, you know, we want to improve or things that we feel are already strong and, and really the off the field piece of it, you know, with the Ram Club and, and the support from everybody and, and the attendance at games, that's, that's the one check mark that we can put in a box say, you know, that, that's outstanding and, and we want to continue to build on that if we can. Um, so, yeah, that, that part of it, we're, we're extremely proud to be a part of it. What do you think the players have learned this season? Oh, I think they've learned they have to fight all the time. Um, that when they let down even once or twice or a little bit, it can really snowball on them. I think they've got to learn to believe in themselves a little bit more because they have flashed where they can do it. Uh, but they have to understand a sustained effort and a consistency and doing all the things you're supposed to on and off the field contribute to, to your performance on the field. A PA announcer, Gino Borchardt, told me before the game on Saturday at the lunch last week that they asked Eric Richards that question. He said he learned humility and perseverance. Yes, and I would say that's definitely been two lessons to, to learn. Um, you know, we don't get to function as a normal college football program in a lot of ways just because of facility issues or, or just whatever. And, you know, I've been proud of our guys to they kind of buck up and do what they need to do. What have you learned after oh, gosh. almost this first season? Where do you want to start? I mean, I've <laughs> learned a whole lot. I've learned uh, schedule's important. You know, I think our morning practices have, have hurt us instead of helped us um, because, you know, it's just so tough when you have that part of the day and 
kind of wears you out. I think that piece that I've learned a lot about, uh, the scholarship angle of it, um, you know, how to award, who to award, and, and that part of it. I believe um, delegation, because I've delegated quite a bit, some things I probably shouldn't have delegated as much. Um, but I think the number one thing I learned more than anything else probably is that every single person in your program has to be on board. And if somebody is not, you have to address that and you have to take care of it. Um, so that piece of it, that piece of it I've, you know, I've just, all the staffs I've worked on, I've always been with them for so long, that was kind of a given. But now that I've had to, to do it, that's something that, you know, I have to address and move on with. You have one more game this season, but mm -hmm. with the off season looming, are you going to make any changes as far as recruiting goes? Yes, yes, we are going to bring in some older guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to bring in some, probably some JUCO guys. Uh, going to bring in some transfers that that want to be here, uh, but we're going to continue to build the lifeblood, you know, through the bottom, through the freshmen, and continue to build to the core. We feel like we got some really good core players in this group. I mean, they've performed pretty well, a lot of them, and it's just when you have that the older versus younger, you know, and I know it's an old theme, but that, that kind of trumps a lot of things you want to do as, you know, when, when you take the whole sum of it. But uh, yeah, we're going to add some older guys uh, that really want to be here um, that we've reached out to that fit our profile. They're really strong students. Um, they really want to build something and, you know, that, that'll help us get some fence posts into the, into the ground and build with. And some of our older guys that we have, the Eric Richards, uh, you know, the Jamarcuses and, and those guys, they're, they're, the, they're the ones we're going to build around and we're going to see where it goes. After the game Saturday, you'll probably start full bore recruiting on Sunday. Have you mm -hmm. actually, do you actually start recruiting we've before been recruiting. the season's over? We've been recruiting. Yeah, we've been recruiting some. Uh, basically just setting the groundwork and the foundation uh, for that. You know, a lot of other schools are making offers at this point. We're not making true offers. We've made a couple, but not many. Right now, we're still in evaluation. Are you a good fit? You know, where does it go? Um, because we don't want to miss on recruiting. We don't want to get hasty and miss or, you know, or sit back too long and wait and miss. So you got to, to me, every piece that we bring in is going to be vitally important to where our future is. And that final game is Saturday up in Goodwell, Oklahoma against mm -hmm. OK Panhandle State, or Panhandle State as I guess they like to be referred to, who beat Texas College last week. Mm -hmm. They're at the top of offense as far as the rushing games go and in the CSFL, and I think third in defense. So mm -hmm. what kind of challenge are they going to? Oh, everybody's a huge challenge for us. But these guys, they're, they're extremely physical. Um, they're very well seasoned. They're very well coached. Um, you know, they make some mistakes, but not a lot. Uh, the key for us is to, we got to make some stops, but we got to hold on to the ball on offense and we got to score. I mean, we have to score. We can't just play keep away, take time off the clock. That doesn't, I mean, it, it eases the burden on the defense a little bit, but they need, we need to help them scoring and uh, that's got to happen. We need to win the, the special teams battle. Um, and then that way we give ourselves a chance. Last weekend, Langston beat Sagu 14 to 10 to get the automatic bid to the NAIA. And as I understand it, there's like 16 teams in a coach's poll right. that will play off mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Who do you like out of the CS, or who do you, do you like uh, Langston? How do you like Langston out of the, is that hard to ask that? Or no, answer I, that? no, no, not at all. I, I like Langston. I, I think Langston's got a great chance. Um, you know, they play great defense, and that's the thing about them is they can, they can really cause some problems when they want to, and you're going to have to earn everything you get against them offensively. Uh, they're, they're very athletic, uh, real sound, basic, but their basic is so good because it keeps you from getting big plays on them. They don't give up that, and uh, any team that makes you earn it can be tough to beat in the playoffs. Uh, and they've, they're athletic enough on offense, they're good enough on offense. I think they're, they're going to make a real good run. I would love to see Sagu get a bid um, and go because I think Sagu's been just outstanding this year. And you know, you got four teams at the top that are pretty much in their upper, upper echelon. You know, you got Sagu, you got Langston, you got Arizona Christian, and you got uh, who am I missing? Arizona, oh, no, Oklahoma Panhandle State. Yes. So those four, you know, they're, they've separated themselves, and I think any of them could go into the playoffs and do damage. You know, and it's just the way it works out. There's so few teams that get to go, but. You know, I like Langston's chances. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I want him to go and win it. That'd be fantastic. Were you surprised that they held Sagu to just 10 points? A little bit, you know, but I kind of expected a low-scoring game. When I saw the Arizona Christian game, Arizona Christian game was 21-20. You know, I knew it'd be another one of those battles of, of uh, you know, of a defensive battle, and because that's what Langston plays. And and uh, yeah, if they hold you down, it's tough to stop them too. So they're they're built for the playoffs, in my opinion. Coach, this is, as we said at the outset, the finale. We won't do a show mm -hmm. 
next week, but we will next year. And I just want to say it's been my pleasure. You're a class act, yeah, and wow. you have that coaching pedigree. And I really think when once those wins start, when they maybe they'll start next weekend, but definitely not if not next year they'll start. Once they start, they're going to be coming in droves. Well, we're certainly hoping so. That's what our, our goal is. And as a staff, we've learned a lot. You know, we've kind of chalked this year up to learning. Um, and, and you know, getting better for the future, it's, it's kind of foolish to anybody to think, well, they're going to go out and win right now. I mean, that's really not a, a reality. But I appreciate you having me, and this has, been a, this has been a lot of fun. It went too darn fast. We'll look forward to next year, though. Absolutely. Thank you. Until then, for Coach Joe Prodome, Jimmy the St. Christopher saying so long.